Let me guess, your paintings have streaks, you can see the brush strokes, the canvas texture is showing through, and your colors look muddy. What's up, I'm Christine, and I'm gonna try to help you solve all of these acrylic paint problems. And if we don't solve every single one, I'm at least going to give you a couple of solutions that you can use so you can create paintings that you love and are proud of. It's not about trying to fix the problems, but learning how to work with acrylic paint to avoid the drama in the first place. According to the most recent poll that I did on my channel, you guys really hate seeing your brush strokes. Let's talk about how you can get rid of those brush strokes as well as streaks, because they're kind of the same thing. If you don't want streaks or brush strokes, you have to apply the paint slowly and evenly in small areas at a time. Seems too simple, right? Let me explain. Some artists suggest using additives, but if you add water or a paint medium, it alters how thick or thin the paint is. If you don't mix the paint consistently each time, you end up with streaks. This happens because each layer of paint can have a different thickness and it'll show on top of the layer beneath it. To avoid this, you have to apply multiple layers or spend a lot of time mixing the right amount of paint and medium. The easy solution is to choose the right kind of paint. It's easier to cover a big space with a solid color if the paint is a bit watery from the beginning. You can try a high flow paint or grab a bottle of apple barrel paint because they are thinner and spread easily without adding water. And this bottle of apple barrel paint is a little bit on the transparent side, but we'll get into that later. The consistency of the paint isn't the only thing that will cause streaks. Make sure you're using a soft synthetic brush to avoid leaving streaks. Can you hear how hard this brush is? Don't use a brush like this. A fast, long, broad stroke will also cause streaks, which is why I'm applying the paint slowly and evenly a little bit at a time. Avoid adding globs of paint directly onto the canvas. Even watery paint can leave brush strokes if it's applied too thick. Oh, I almost forgot. Check the transparency of your paint. Some paints aren't solid, and that means you can see the old layer under the new one you just painted. Sometimes you might even see the color of the surface you're painting showing through, and that can leave streaks too. You can check the paint transparency by looking at the back of the paint tube. However, not all brands of paint include this information, which means you'll have to check the transparency on your own. It's easy, trust me. Draw a black line with a Sharpie and then see how well the paint covers it up. That's it. If you can't see the black line, congratulations, your paint is opaque. And if you can still see the line, you might consider using a different brand or color. Here is a perfect example of a brush stroke free background. It took me about an hour to paint this background without streaks and because I used apple barrel paint, which isn't totally opaque, I had to apply at least three layers of paint. <laughs> Creating a background like this was time consuming and I kind of questioned my life choices. And between you and me, that's why I don't normally paint like this. I actually like to show the brush strokes and textures in my art because I'm not very patient. If you see where I'm going with this, another way to deal with brush strokes and streaks in your paintings is to embrace them. You can design and create your art in a way that celebrates these problems instead of trying to get rid of them. I know for a fact that people buy original paintings because they love looking at the brush strokes and textures in them. The next time you go to an art museum, study the paintings that you see in there. You'll find that most of them show the brush strokes that the artist created when they made those paintings. Leaving the brush strokes and the imperfections in your painting is what makes it special. It gives it that human touch. And in the age that we're in, the age of artificial intelligence, where people can create art in Mid Journey and on Dolly 3, you want to do what you can to make your paintings as unique and special as you can. Embracing streaks and brush strokes is just a suggestion, so don't come for me. I'm just saying, if your paintings are streaky because you're moving too fast and you don't want to slow down, you might consider trying an art style that suits how you like to paint. It's all about you and what you would like to achieve in your painting. 
I recently had a viewer reach out to me. They were asking about the canvas texture and they wanted to know if it was normal to see the texture of the canvas through their painting. This is a common question with beginners and I struggled with this myself because here's the deal. When you paint on a surface like a canvas, the paint takes on the texture of that surface. The texture provides a surface for the paint to grip onto. The uneven surface of the canvas allows the paint to adhere better, preventing it from peeling or flaking off. I bet you never thought of a canvas like this before, but the texture of a canvas is a feature. It's the reason why people choose to paint on the canvas. Now you could go through a lot of work. You can add layers of gesso to the canvas and then smooth it down with sandpaper for a flat surface you would have to repeat the process multiple times to make it perfectly smooth. But be careful, sanding gesso can be harmful as it creates tiny dust particles that can be dangerous if they get into your eyes or lungs. If you do this, please wear goggles and a mask for protection. Consider this, instead of going through the trouble to turn a canvas into something that it is not, try painting on a different surface. Wood panels, MDF, and paper are popular alternatives that you can find used in the art community. You can see here that each surface has a unique texture when you look closely, but when compared to a canvas, they appear smoother. You'll want to choose the surface with the texture that's most appealing to you. That will help you get the result that you want. It's all about you. It's okay if this information is new to you because as a beginner, it's not obvious to try painting on a different surface. In fact, most art tutorials on YouTube paint on canvases. I see it everywhere. So as a beginner, you would naturally think to paint on a canvas. You wouldn't think of anything else. And even though the camera in these tutorials might not show the canvas texture well, trust me, it's there. So the next time you're not satisfied with painting on a canvas, consider trying out different surfaces. It's a good reason to purchase more art supplies, especially if it's going to help you get the results that you want. The surface that you choose to paint on will define the look and feeling of all your future paintings, which is a very big deal. Oh, and before I forget, go ahead and leave a comment below about any questions that you might have about acrylic painting. If I get enough questions, I might even make another video like this one. Okay. <laughs> one of the biggest complaints that I hear people talking about when it comes to acrylic painting is that their paintings look dull instead of vibrant. Do you remember when we were talking about transparency earlier? Transparency also affects how bright your paint will look when it's dry. This is because if you're using a transparent color, it will not only dry dark, but it will also have the color below it show through. Now, I don't want you to walk away from this video thinking that transparency is a bad thing because transparency will help you achieve realistic effects. But if you want bold and vibrant colors that pop off of your canvas, you need a bottle of titanium white. What you're going to do is paint a layer of titanium white on top of the existing layer where you want to apply the paint. After the white layer dries, paint whatever color you like. And when it dries, it will appear brighter because it's on top of a layer of white instead of a color. Easy, right? I use this technique in all of my acrylic paintings to make my subject stand out from the background. This is the type of technique that you want to use sparingly because you don't want every little detail to stand out the same way. You should only use this on the subject of your painting to add emphasis to it. Another reason your paintings might appear dark could be due to a misunderstanding or a lack of knowledge of color theory. And for this one, I'm going to show you an example while I explain. Most beginners use gradients in their paintings. They blend from light to dark to smooth transitions between colors. But this can make your paintings look dull, which is why this next trick might be a little challenging. I want you to practice making darker colors by using the opposite color on the color wheel instead of using black. Then as you paint, try placing the darker color right next to the paint straight from the tube. 
When you place a light color next to a dark one, it makes the colors look even brighter. It's basically an optical illusion that I don't hear a lot of artists talking about. When you integrate this understanding with color theory and choose to darken your colors using complementary hues rather than black, your paintings will instantly become more vibrant. Here are two paintings. One painting is done using the color straight from the tube plus white and black. The other one is done using the complementary color to darken the original color in addition to using white and black. Contrary to popular belief, using black isn't bad. You need to use it correctly and you need to use it sparingly. If you're skeptical, try it. I guarantee it'll make your painting more vibrant is something that I think you'll be proud of in the end. I could make an entire video about color theory and what colors you should use based on the subject that you want to paint. Oh, wait a minute, I actually did. Go ahead and check it out and I'll see you there.